People want to define Gen Z, but that's our job. I weigh tables. Philosophy, I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives. And led a team on patrol. I serve. Well, I go to school full time, while I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Rally Cry Collegiate Series featuring Rocket League presented by the Army National Guard. We are well underway in the playoff action here. This bracket moving very quickly over the next two days and a very important series ahead of us in the upper semifinals. My name is Galgan alongside Relic and Relic. We've seen a lot so far. We've whittled the field down a little bit from 16 teams down to 12, but a very important series here as the winner of this one locks in their spot in the upper bracket finals they'll play tomorrow they'll still have both double elimination lives intact and they'll be one step away from locking their spot in the grand finals we head to that upper bracket semi-final where it is oklahoma christian who we just saw now up against oakland university it's as close to a money match as you can get, Gaug. And going into the grand final means that you guarantee yourself a shot. Uh, sorry, into the upper final, I should say. Guarantees you a shot at the grand final. It doesn't guarantee you top four because you drop into the semifinals. The lower semifinals, I believe. I think. Maybe it is top four. Maybe I shouldn't I think, think about it too I hard. I think I think it is a money match. Yeah. You know, maybe I should just stop thinking. Maybe I should tell you about some of the results that I feel was surprising or you know close fought to the extent where you look at the results um or you look at the the fallout i should say rather you're like hmm, what's gonna happen here let's talk about pescados first they've beaten drexel dragons um again number one seed now one seed on points four one I think that's significant. I think that's a huge, huge win for Pescados. Drexel Dragons drop down to face Cal. I don't think that's any easier a match for them. We'll see how they go on. Uh, UT Dallas, on the other hand, not great. You can probably tell by the fact that we're covering OC versus Oakland. The UT Dallas folks, they didn't win that series. They lost 4-2, to two, and now they face Boise State, which means that they are as good as out of tournament, um, pending the result, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> I will wish them good luck, Galgan. They're going to need it. They're going to need a little bit more than good luck, but they'll certainly need everything that they can get. In this particular matchup, however, they've got a lot on the line for both teams, because if you want to talk about Pescada beating the Drexel Dragons, I think you can make a similar point about Oakland University appearing here in the upper bracket semifinals, because Oakland did not have the best showing possible of their weekends of closed qualifier play but they're here turning it on to another level in the playoffs what you expect from top teams now flip it on the other side oklahoma christian we just saw them they're coming hot off of a sweet victory against terps esports as the rain starts to pour down and really make this a battle between both sides Oklahoma Christian are guaranteed to not have G-Man for this full series. Hopefully two games, but that seems to be the maximum. They want to set themselves out on a good start here against Oakland. And that's going to be the, the again, a one shining race for Oakland. An Oakland team that is certainly good. We've seen this team before. We've seen this team do very well. But have we seen this team win a bracket? No admittedly very tough competition within the weeks they did take part so let's see what oce esports can do while they still have g-man in tow uh, on the rain point more water in my rocket league no way take it away not looking at you new aquadome oh okay well you know i think the measured response is to play every single series on the new aquadome uh, every single game tomorrow for the rest of the bracket, including Grand Finals. I'm sure the players would love every bit of that decision, but trying to find a bit of love on either side is a bit difficult right now. Exchanged in demolitions, perhaps. No real offensive chances of note just yet. It's a slower start for Oklahoma Christian. Obviously, they're not going to have the 
easiest time compared to the prior series. Walking into the zone, a nice tester there. Chicken really lets that one go as long as it can and might end up paying the price as Oakland start to recycle this one around on the offensive push. Very different feel, isn't it, to the last series. You can definitely tell that Oakland University are well warmed up. UT Dallas are hardly chumps in the park to walk by without some sort of a conversation, and they did feel their wrath to some extent. Two games lost against them. You see definitely looking like they're the ones on the back foot right now. I'd argue that they probably had the better chances, minus that one well saved by Chile. Let's see what Tysonic Boom can do from here. It's a setup to peep towards the net, and no one really chasing. Too much power on that one. Well, Navalo is through. Trying to get something going for the backboard and does keep the livers to the bar. G-Man with another save. Quick in transition, our OC. Can't get anything going. Immediately shut out as G-Man forced to play that off the sidewall. Dangerous as Whale is lurking. Tysonic boom up early. Grabs the first touch. No second. But has done enough here to secure Oakland more offensive pressure halfway through this first game. It's really starting to slide back over towards Oakland. They've got plenty of chances. Making OC work for oh, every so bit of a clear, but what a nice touch from G-Man. Second is a dribbler down, but people take it aside. Oh, it's too much angle on the car, which led to, apologies, led to way too little power on the resulting shot. That was the most clear-cut opportunity for OC Esports to go ahead and take the lead. They do not. Let us see whether that bites them later. Great to peep. Round the corner. Good save, G-Man. Tysonic moves there at the near post. Hit set post. What a shame. Just as we have one good chance for OC Esports, Oakland University fashion one themselves. It's another one that was going slightly too wide for the post again, I think, regardless. Tysonic Boom with another great save. Slowly but surely, the action, the form ramping up. It's who gets that first one, Galgan. We'll see if it's OC. They've got the ball back where they need it. G-Man on the hunt for demos. Doesn't find anything as Keith dodges, but can't get the ball past Chile, who stands tall. Tysana Coombe plays low, looking central, and Pete makes a quick turn, but G-Man cuts off the passing lane and looking for more, but blocked once again. Both teams struggling to find the bottom of the box, and when they do, the shots come oh so close, but yet so far from their intended target. I think Oakland doing really well to steal these 100 boosts, limiting what OC can do in regards to counter punches. That's loose from Tysonic Boom. My word. On target, maybe. Pete makes the save. That was a nice challenge to Tysonic Boom in a much better position this time around, but he's chasing G-Man here. The drop down to Chimkin wasn't really able to read it properly. Chili runs into Whale with save, although he didn't really have to move much. G-Man around the corner, and Pete throws it away. No chances, 30 to play. G-Man gets another look. A demo from the Chili onto the lead defender. That's not gonna do anything if Chili actually caught up in the smoke screen. So now Chicken trying to stall for time and deny Oakland one last chance, but that's exactly what Whale wants. Bumped on the approach, however, so G-Man goes back the other way. Tysana Kuhn tries to play clear, but it's right into the hands of Chicken. Where's Chili racing for it? Whale wins the challenge outright, but it's not in a great spot. And OC, they lack the striker to send that one home, but they've got every bit of pressure. Chicken jumps up. Chili has to play this ball very carefully and perhaps for overtime indeed game one scoreless going to extra time north has got to be sweating in his boots <laughs> oh man oakland has come to play the haters will say it's more boring but this is simply what higher quality rocket league looks like both teams have played without much fault, to be fair. If there has been fault, it's been through the effort and industry of the opponents to force such a mistake from them. It's gonna take a big moment to score, and that big moment is now. That is the first clear-cut individual mistake that we have seen in five minutes 30, and it comes from Chile of all people. Honduras, whale simply too quick to the ball. 1-0 Oakland.
1-0 Oakland. And at the same time, it's from Whale who has been all over the ball offensively for Oakland in that opening game. So you expect the opportunities to come from that central point. It's a misread by Chile, yes, but Whale finally gets one to fall here just 30 seconds into OT. And it begs the question, right? Oakland come into this bracket as the 10th seed. They have an initial matchup against Ohio State Gray, who had some decent results in the close qualifiers, but like a lot of these middle of the pack teams, struggled to get it done against the top of the table and made it closer than they needed to against some others. So Oakland cruised through that. They then take on UT Dallas, take them down in six. It's a question of these teams understanding close qualifier. Yes, they can secure as many or as few points as necessary to qualify into the top 16. But once you get to the playoff bracket, turn it on and play like the team we know that you can play like. It's a shame maybe we didn't see it during the closed qualifiers, but Oakland was always going to be towards the top of the table. Now, when we have this series where Oklahoma Christian are going to have to go through a roster change, you're not really set up for success early on. I think you you put it very well a couple minutes ago. Um, I say a couple minutes ago. It's more like 20 minutes ago now at this point. Very long break, of course. But you were mentioning how you feel like Oakland is in this similar sort of bracket to OC, maybe sllightly behind your Boise's and, and your Maryvilles, but very much still a, a you know part of that top four conversation where on their day they could go ahead and win the entire thing. And now we're asking of OC Esports, you weren't able to win with your full three-man roster and now we're asking you to win with your substitute well maybe north is the guy maybe north is the answer and i think there is some logic to suggest that with the studying that some of these teams put into opponents and, and who they could possibly be facing there's probably not that much information on how north fits into this trio mm. but i also have a sneaking suspicion that maybe oc don't have much of an idea as well. It's always good to practice with your sub, of course, but you never plan for your sub to play. It does make you wonder, right? Because if you think about the pieces of OC, how they typically operate, and not just in past precedent, but also in this specific weekend, because we just saw them come off that series against Terps. A lot of offensive effort coming through Chile, having some fantastic shots set up a bit by teammates, but mostly on individual effort. G-Man is another one of those players who, I mean, you've seen G-Man in the context of Oklahoma Christian. You've seen him in the context of G-Buffo, that team that made it to main event in this most prior North American RLCS split. So big, big results for a player like G-Man. Big, big shoes to fill for a player like North. And we can say it time and time again. The only thing that's going to prove us wrong is a solid enough stance for Mosey, even if they drop the second game. Keeping it close, if it stays scoreless, forcing it to overtime again, give yourself that ability to win the game in the first place. If Oakland start to run away with it here, you have a lot more question marks to deal with. Well, the compass says North, and here he is on the ball at the beginning of game number two. And that's the first opportunity saved away by Pete. Worth noting, actually, that that last game was OC's first loss in bracket play. Their only losses otherwise were the three in the tiebreaker match against Boise. But that was an overcommitment. That was a punish. Whale is the only scorer in this series, and it's the go-ahead goal both times. Let's quickly note as well, it's not G-Man out of play, it's Chicken. So it's G-Man, Chili, and North is the three-man roster being fielded for this particular series. We'll see if that stays consistent. I would assume that it is the case because North is here to at least permanently replace for this particular series. We won't dwell on it for too long, but certainly wait to see North's impact on this particular show. As OC began to recycle this one around and get a clear, it's North spearheading the push, gets it central, but Chili can't jump to that conclusion just yet. Has to hedge their bets a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball. I think North is warm and ready to go, so that much I'm not concerned with. What I am concerned with is Copeland seemingly getting a bit stronger here and a bit more confident behind the ball. I apologize, might have lost you for a little bit there, Gaug, and I, I don't know, you, you were covering that it wasn't G-Man that was subbed out? No, it is not G-Man, it is Chicken instead Chicken, of yeah. G-Man. Yeah, so that's... 
I, I don't know whether that's good or bad. I certainly know that there's been much better offensive guile from OC Esports in this first minute and a half or so, but it's all fair and well saying, oh, that looks good, and oh, that might have been good, but <laughs> you need goals in the back of the net, most crucially, and we're not seeing those crucial bump plays or demo plays. We're not really seeing the Oakland University defense panicking too much either, and, and that's where we've got to credit them. You know, their defense looks really strong. Uh, it's on OC Esports now to be patient, find those moments, but even when that moment came, still an incredible save to match it. It's beef on the on the uh, on the defensive end. And yet those half rotations continue and they almost get the better of it on the rebound, but it's saved aside with a little help from the post. North once more, a third chance potentially for OC, and it's clear to the side. Chili now wants even more from this offensive push, constant pressure, chance after chance opportunities come knocking here for OC. But can they open the door in time as time continues to take down? North goes over to Chili oh. towards the bar, and North taps it in. Finally, finally, the persistence pays off. Excellent work in field from North, leaves it for Chile. And I mean, to be fair, that was going in on target anyway. It harmlessly flies off North into the back of the net. And I mean, you've got to say, it was a long time coming. At least OC Esports have made those opportunities count at last. Half time, 1-1, one, one, but right down the other end. Oh, miscommunication there. Or actually, was it? No, it wasn't, because G-Man's in orange colors, but of course he's playing for the blue team. Again, mind games mentality, certainly confusing this commentator. Just trying to shake some of the rust off, OC, if they even had any to begin with, trying to get the nerves out of the way. But Oakland still look calm, cool, and collected. Two minutes to play as North disrupts the sequence, tries to make Keith go early, but stays resolute in the plan, and Tysonic Boom wants this central back to keep where it came from. 1-2-1, one, one, succeeds, gets G-Man to go a bit too early, but North with another block, proving to be a solid anchor for this OC roster thus far in game two. It's kept them close, but for how much longer will Barry's at the near corner? Yeah, notice how they were creating a 90 degree corner here. Oakland University, Whale on one side, Tysonic Boom on the other. Chili was literally walking into a dead end. There was no way that that ball was gonna have any forward momentum. It was gonna ricochet back. Beautiful set piece play, I would argue, from Oakland University. They had tried to go for the kickoff as well. And Chile marshals this rather nicely indeed. But it's something I was worried about that OC Esports, as much as they have looked slightly better, we're still not seeing that pop up ability uh, that put herps in the ground, for example, that has, you know, made them so feared in this competition. Oakland University continues to look like the essence of calm itself. Final confirmation as well before we move on from that last match we were waiting for, Maryville and Southern Miss Coca-Cola. Perhaps expectedly, Maryville take that series in six, but OC trying to keep this as close as they can and tie things up at 1-1. Chile with a robbery on the pass, and G-Man beautiful flip back around to Barry before Whale has the chance. A, me a mechanical marvel. I talk about turning on a dime sometimes, but that was a full 360 confudulation of the car. Uh, I'm surprised that the axles did not break off with that maneuver. But then to actually go on ahead and get the shot on target, let alone with the power behind it that he did, brilliant, brilliant individual play there from G-Man to tie things up. And so Oakland University is on them to do it all again, to find that third go-ahead goal, to really put this game uh, to sleep, although, if it's anything but tiresome, I could watch this all day. Transition play for OC, trying to follow through is Chili. It had some venom, some vitriol to it early on, but losing its speed. Chili now again goes over the top, waiting at the midfield line, forces everybody up. It's a double. Chili saves the shot away from the far corner. It was in, guaranteed, has the whole defense shook. But Oakland gets a free transition out of it and may have seen themselves to OT in a game they feel like they might not have been able to win. Although one last chance. Oh. Double come in, no! He with the follow through, sends it away. Chili with a huge save, zero seconds on the clock. Whale keeps it alive in the corner, and a fiery finish oh. to this game. Sees oh. Oakland oh. University take a two-game series lead. Wow. Well, let's go back to that earlier North chance. 
He played the numbered game, shot for where he thought it was most likely going to go into the back of the net. There was no mistake there. The problem being the one variable he didn't account for, his own teammate rotating out. Then down the other end, you've got Oakland University doing everything in their power to keep that ball off the ground. It's a full send and they know that they're not going to get punished for it because there's not enough momentum. That ball is not traveling at pace. It would require the cooks a pinch of all cooks of pinches to get it right down the other side of the field to threaten their own net. And so all they have to do is place their cars in the right positions to try and get that one crucial touch to put it in the back of the net. That's exactly what happens. Credit to them. But you've got to feel you've got to feel for North uh, and, and OC Christian here because that that's a tough one to take. That's a really tough one to take. They played so much better with North in this roster. Better chance creation, more stability rotational-wise. Transitions looked far more successful as well. And yet, having had, for me, the better opportunities and the more plentiful opportunities, I, I feel like a broken record here, Galgan. They didn't take them, and look what happened. That's the thing, though. You get to that zero-second opportunity, and you're talking about one final chance, the pinch of wonders. So many stars having to align on both sides just to make things happen. But to me, it feels like Oakland are always taking the first step. Even if Oklahoma Christian are staying in lockstep, they are just that fraction of a second behind, and it's making all the world of difference. One goal games both ways overtime in the first nearly in the second but oakland still has that series lead they cling on to every advantage that they can grab and it doesn't matter how far ahead or how few the distance may be oakland feels like they own this series right now the next minute and a half is possibly the most important minute and a half of oklahoma christian's entire series because that's a morale shattering loss game number two morale shattering and it's a shot in the arm for Oakland University who looked the most likely to lose and yet they didn't nice into passing play through the midfield but the demo shakes things up North strong through one peep over one no third player from Oakland University to follow up and that's going to go into no man's land midfield and a high stack here for OC, passing play early. Initial shot goes wide, so we'll need to look for more, but Whale, ever powerful with the clears, gets one through. No immediate follow, though, for Oakland. They're happy to take a bit of a backseat approach, let OC push up to the midfield line, waste some resources. G-Man has plenty in the tank, and North will follow suit. Another steal, another demo, everything falling their way, but Chile can't win the race to the ball. Side wall, oh. G-Man gets it central, and North taps it home. A good clean up there, minute and a half in. Definitely a shot, but it's not a half bad pass, is it? Forces that potential save from Whale, who finds his face full of host, and North couldn't miss. It's another go-ahead goal for OC Esports. Now can they hold it? See if they can. Update for you elsewhere in the tournament. Fifth team eliminated from the competition. UC Berkeley fall by virtue of a sweep to the Drexel Dragons. Wow. So Drexel will advance the lower round three, keeping their playoff hopes alive. Cal, of course, strong showings in the later weekends. Just couldn't get it done here. Very impressive from Drexel Dragons, especially in sweet fashion. Sweeps have been all that we have seen on broadcast here today. This was the one where we're looking at it, thinking surely not, but here we are. 2-0 down. We'll be with OC in the driver's seat. Game number three, Chile infield. That's a great shot from G-Man who steals it off the hood of another. North infield, and I don't think G-Man was quite ready for that one, was rotating out as the cameraman. Getting excited, getting hyped, so are we, but maybe lay off the energy drink, my friend. Let's see man to recycle through. Hopefully calm things down. No corner jitters for either team as they tend to take the ball there from time to time. North, talk about being calm, cool, and collected oh! here, but no, Tysonic Boom ah! makes two miraculous saves back to back. You can't teach defensive prowess like that. That is extraordinary from Tysonic Boom. A, a fantastic name, albeit a name we haven't really talked much of so far this series. There he is with a big bump on G-Man. Pete going to that backboard. G-Man's recovered well, 
to throw this away to midfield. Not too far, however. That's brilliant from Tysonic Boom. But look at that, people's way too far behind. These challenges, G-Man, North that field, Chile in a great place. But that was a huge opportunity, albeit a very difficult opportunity. It was one man against the net, but the angle was too much. Right, that's the chance that Chile wants, but not the angle that Chile needs. So not going to be a second goal for OC, but they've kept the pressure up as much as they needed to. Pete, however, with a quick clear here towards the middle of the field, G-Man registers a save. No real immediate threat challenge from Tysonic Boom a bit late to the party, but still made contact. Locked back into the other side for OC. The pressure continues, forcing these commits out of Oakland from the middle of the field just to get the ball moving. And it's a save again for Tysonic Boom, who has put in a defensive shift and then some. But OC, they are controlling the ball with this one goal lead. It's a dangerous one to play aggressively with, but OC are doing a solid job. No, but I like that they're playing proactive. In this case, offense really is the greatest form of defense because the moment that you sit back against Oakland, you know that they've got just as much, if not more, mechanical capability as you as a squad. <laughs> and they will take advantage. They will run like the wind in order to score that equalizer. And maybe Tysonic Boom, the equalizer can come through him as a 1v1. G-Man does well. Chile and just get over the top of Whale. His peep misses out, but so does G-Man. Whittington Central here. We're taking the train to it. Back into the center. Whale's got nothing to work with. Has to rotate out. Chile. And look at G-Man on the far side. Could do something with this. Backboard north. Good saves near post by Tysonic Boom again. Running out of time though. In a series where Oakland University have always seemingly taken that first step. This time around, game three, OC provides the call, and there is no response on the other side. It's 2-0 with nine to play, and OC want more. Funnily enough, I think this was a very risky call to make for Chile. I'm expecting that first person rotating into the midfield to actually get there first, but because Chile, again, has that determination and that focus to get to the ball, that's the definitive action that makes a difference on this case. One shot, one goal, two in total, maybe three. No, G-Man can't perform the spectacular. North can't either. The time has run out. Blue on top, 2-1 in the series. One more to find that equalizer. And let's celebrate for a moment that this series finally brings us a contested one between two teams where they both at least win a game. Obviously, we hope for more. I, these teams feel like a great matchup for each other because it feels as though we've seen Oklahoma Christian at their most confident state, you know, playing not with reckless abandon, but more so understanding that they can control the play without being on top of the ball every single second of the game. Oakland is kind of bringing that out of them, though. I feel like both mm. of these teams are working with each other to elevate that play style, which is what you love to see between teams at the top of the table. So I'm hoping we get some more of that. Obviously, you know, it's still tightly contested, close games, but this is one of the first steps for Oklahoma Christian where I'm really convinced that the team synergy is not shaken up by the substitution. And yeah, I actually, I want to go as far as to say is north is providing them with with something of a of a of a of a balance because i think with with chimkin fantastic player fantastic player that shouldn't be in doubt but when i look at this trio i look at a trio that is very offensive focused and any saves that are made are more a who's in the spot to make the save rather than somebody who is dedicated to that quick retreat back from a high press to you know be the person that you expect to make the save time in time out on top of that you also have that ego situation you've just beaten turps easily but north's coming in fresh north has a point to prove north isn't expected to be this incredible player out the box straight away and so north has got that humbleness about him north is providing a stable platform for two players who want to pop off and i just think that's working wonders they were unlucky to lose game number two they fully deserved to win game number three if north is going to be that humble personality here or oc lock them in G-Man is going to talk his talk. People asking in chat if they can recover OC after losing game two in the way that they did. G-Man pops into chat in the middle of the series to say, yeah, and that's it. So wow. The confidence <laughs> is brimming, and you would expect nothing less from a player like G-Man. 
Who knows uh, that any series is winnable and almost gets OC with the dream start there to game four. Love it. Absolutely love it. Listen, you want to shut up Mr. Commentator, you go do it on the field. And Tysonic Boom, I'm fortunate to be on the losing side, really, in, in many senses. So many fantastic saves in game number three. And there again at the near post doing their heavy lifting. The peep on the chase now. Maybe fashioning together something, but that's a brilliant play from G-Man. Just cushions it onto the backboard. And Chili's got no boost to work with. Holds up Whale for the moment. Tysonic Boom goes forward. Loose. Spiked up, Chili now keeps it close to the chest, peep into G-Man, Whale over him, past Chili too, can't quite read North's trajectory however, into the midfield he goes. Reminder as well, you win this match, you lock being in the money, it's top three at a minimum if you make the upper bracket final, you drop down from there, you're fighting for third at worst, you've got the prize pool on lock, both of these teams know what's at stake. Start to get closer, you start to feel it for OC. They have had their opportunities taken. Tysonic, boom, big double. Sends parallel to the line, Pete picks it up. No ability, Tysonic, boom, turns around, however, tries to get the shot off, and Wales is waiting patiently. This is a sketchy chance, but OC find a transition out of it and send it on frame to boot with a demo in tow. But Whale with a big save and then some to get the ball clear from the corner. Job's not done, but people make it so. Killing. Tysonic Boom is off the G-Man, who returns to sender. And Chili towards the backboard has no boost to even try and follow up. Double demo in the midfield gives Oakland University the length and breadth of the field to try and work something, but they completely flubbed the play action. Tysonic Boom does well to just bounce it off the backboard. G-Man with the setup. There were two players in the way of that. Ooh, Chili going for the spectacular. North having to rotate out now, kind of crisscrossing over each other OC Esports there, finding these individual shots, but maybe requiring that extra pass to open up open. Certainly doing a decent job of stealing away boost, getting demos, whatnot, everything going the way it goes bottom corner, unable to get the tap through with a huge maze of defenders to find your way if you're OC, but the attack still goes on. Chili low boost, no problem. Sent on target and landing on top of Whale to try and slow down the defensive response time. North taps that one down. Tysonic Boom takes it away. A lot of commitments here for Oakland on defense. They're using up resources that OC are stealing away. So you have to feel like the goal is coming sooner rather than later, but it's not like Oakland wants to just concede and move on. They've got every right to clear the ball aside, and that's exactly what Tysonic Boom does. Now it's Oakland's turn. Oakland's definitely playing with a lot more patience as well. Focusing on the defensive responsibilities first, and then if, and only if, they feel like they can move up as a unit. Do they actually commit players? Ooh, that one a little too close for comfort. G-Man, not gonna reach north, but it will go back to G-Man. With that flip reset. Uses it, Chili, oh, almost manages to combine again. Peep with the save, has to wave dash into this one, not quick enough. Ice pressure from North, oh, Tysonic Boom again. How many more times will he be required? See that little blip of the ball and you know it's close, but no doubt about it, Chili over the top, 27 seconds, and it feels like it's been a long time coming, but a well-deserved goal here for OC to try and level the series. Just a minor mistake there from Whale, being pretty impeccable throughout this series so far. Just needs to angle that car a little bit more up, even though they would have been demoed irrespective. That 90 degree angle on the car would have been enough to tip the ball up and over. Now there's barely any time for Oakland University, who've done well to soak up the majority of the pressure to go down the other end and score. It's strong from Peep. It's really good from Peep, but North too strong at the near post, and he throws it all the way down, right back to their own backboard. All the hard work undone. On target! It's Chili, it's two, and it's a tie series for certain. What's another 2-0 for OC? What play they have exemplified here and shown in game number four. It's beautiful, it's great. The adjustments being made from this team are locked in, and Oakland yet to find a response offensively, have not had the firepower that they desired, and it's largely due to the fact that they've spent so much time in their own zone 
by pressure and virtue of this OC offense. Everything is starting to look up for this team, not just in the sense that they've tied the series up, but that they have that scary word, momentum, sliding in their favor here, Oklahoma Christian. Some might have argued that with a substitute, things would only go south. But it's been very much going the way of North. I, again, I have to praise him in terms of being in the right place to put away goal opportunities, uh, in terms of his willingness to commit to the press as well. A couple of times where we could have seen Oakland pick up possession and try to set up something of their own, and yet he was there immediately in their faces, stopping them from ever thinking about stepping wheel in the blue half. I'm delighted by this performance. <laughs> I don't feel so great about Chim Kim because they look a lot better with North in the squad. But I mean, you take what you get, Galgan. This 2 2 tie series is effectively a best of three, so they say. I think the question, I mean, my jury is still out in terms of Chicken versus North. I think I mm. really like what they're seeing here. I more so back it on the sense that Oakland feel like they need to play with the lead intact. They, they want to be yes. the ones to score the first goal. They want to set the pace and then dictate it from there for the rest of the individual game that they're in. When they don't get that chance, something about their ability to claw their way back in doesn't really have me convinced that they can do such. Obviously, it's high impact plays like this one right off the kickoff that Oakland love to subsist on. As soon as they can stamp their mark on the game, it feels like they get a lot more confident. Yeah, Pete with the 90 degree turn left as soon as he saw that that ball was heading in a fortuitous direction. Uh, I hope you agree with me on this. I think Oakland is just a team that likes defending. I think they're a, they're a team that really, really enjoys soaking up the pressure and countering with with venom but the thing is is there's only so far that that strategy can go because by naturally inclining yourself to a more defensive rotation you're asking for trouble you're asking for the more mechanically gifted players to break out of a malaise or come up with something spectacular which we know all six of these players really can do let's see whether they can fulfill your prophecy gallery let's see if they can hold on to this lead or even better go extend it and listen, I have it on vested authority. Okay, no goal. I have it on vested authority. A certain someone has popped in and said, guess who's in game seven, which can only mean one thing given the oh, team really? that they are associated with. UT Dallas and Boise State in lower round two. Really? Have gone to game seven, which is no absolute insanity that that matchup <laughs> is happening as early as it is and that it's gone to game seven. That is, I mean, that's... UT Dallas through and through though, just when we think, <laughs> just when we think they're out of lives, just when we think that their goose is cooked, they find themselves with something extra in reserve. Well, let's see whether they can actually convert it into a game seven win. That would absolutely be upset of the day. Meanwhile, three minutes 30 left in this one, just shy of, and Oakland University still do have the lead, but Galgan, it has been all OC Esports since the goal. Truly has, but at the same time, felt like we saw a lot of demos in the last 30 seconds or so. Big resets. North has a one-on-one -on -one against Tysonic Boom, who plays it wide. That's the initial save away. Well, near to the corner, but here's G-Man on the turn again. OC doing such a solid job of stealing resources away. It was the back corner boost that was fully used by G-Man. It doesn't matter anyway. Whale sends just wide of that bottom corner, but the effect is still felt. Now in transition, OC, good touch from G-Man. No follow through from North, but Chili sends on frame. Big save from Peep. Oh, now in uh -oh. transition, have you bought too heavily? No, Peep has to pull away. Oakland taking big risks and trying to secure the mid-100 boosts, but it actually is paying huge dividends. OC Esports might be stealing the 100 boosts away from the back corners, but Oakland still have the resources to defend and counterpunch. It's extremely steely from Oakland. <laughs> Do you imagine that there will be more on the way from OC Esports in the way of shots? But for the moment, at least, it's looking okay, if not a bit perilous. Okay. 
for OKC. See if they can continue things. Two minutes to play. Need the equalizer sooner rather than later. And other than North to try and spearhead this play. But a block from Peep on the back wall. And another one from Whale that registers as a save. Cycles out to G-Man with a good second. North jumps quickly. But a nice reaction jump underneath the ball to get it cleared by Sonic Boom. To do the rest of the heavy lifting. And Oakland get that much closer to taking another series lead. Rotates out, no boost. Pulled off by Whale. That's a demo on the far side on North. Tysonic Boom, that's a horrible bounce. Tries to recycle it to Whale and does so with a plomb. Whale in field, demo from Peep. Has to make it, but it doesn't. Neither does the defender nor Peep. Big chance, gone a wasted. Peep has to back up now. Time dwindling. Not too much pressure against Oakland, but they've given the ball right back to North, who's waiting in the corner. G-Man in support, not a whole lot of boost in that tank, so have to watch this coming right back down central. But Peep sends it to the side anyway. Fares better in the chance with Chili having to make this reactionary jump out of the corner, and a beautiful second touch gives North a little bit of a lane here to beat Whale to the touch. Now Chili follows through. Where's G-Man? Too far removed from the sequence. Felt like that was the one, two, three punch that OC needed, and they've got this one away from the box for now, but with 40 seconds to go, time's ticking. There was a slight misstep there from Tysonic Boom as well. G-Man was committed, they could have had a free shot, but because they jumped previously in anticipation, they weren't able to follow up. It's G-Man looking for Chili, and G-Man! Oh. oh my word! What a sequence there! It starts with a fantastic jump from the ceiling, and that in and of itself would have been enough, but the save goes right back into that Octane's body, and he buries it top corner. You want to talk about goal of the tournament? I think we have a new entry. Consider me electrocuted. That was shocking, but in the best way possible. You just don't expect that sort of play. And there might be more, but this time from Oakland. It's Pete. He tries to break his way past Chile. North now as well, able to stump him. Shot, too sharp an angle. And now for the counter. Maybe a buzzer beater on the horizon for OC. It's G-Man, the goal scorer, the equalizer. Oakland let that touch the ground. OT in game number five. What an unreal series we've had to this point. Second overtime. OC allowing Oakland to score, and they may end up paying for it for the first time in three games, but they want to write their own story, create their own narrative here, Oklahoma Christian. It's North. Cycles through to the corner, looking for anything here. Plays out to G-Man, goes for the quick oh! shot, and wins the weight room challenge. Buries it. OC, three in a row. He's the connoisseur of confidence. He might be egotistical. He might be full of himself. But he has every right to be Galgan, because he has won his team this game. And with that, OC take the lead of the series. They head onto match point scenario and Oakland have to win twice in a row. Extraordinary. Um, result has just come in, by the way, the, the latest victims of OC, up until this point at least. Terps Esport take down Michigan State 4-2 in the lower bracket. So we bid adieu to Michigan State. But uh, back to this series. Oh boy, G-Man turned up the music. This is exactly what you need. And it's what you love to see if you're a fan of this Oklahoma Christian roster because G-Man as a player has that ability to impact everyone through those individual plays. Obviously, there's plenty of team setup too. I mean, the one goal we saw from G-Man just to score in regulation and get us to overtime in the first place was a pass down to Chile that got sent right back into G-Man and the finish is fantastic. But so much of this Oklahoma Christian play style just depends on the momentum that they carry forward. Not necessarily sure. in the fictional sense of, oh, they're winning a lot. They're getting a whole lot of, you know, they're getting a whole lot of results through. And I, I see that result that yes. you just <laughs> that. So I'm sure we'll get to that in a second, but so much of this Oklahoma Christian play style to me is relative to how much confidence they're playing with more so than your typical team because confidence can do wonders for any three rocket league players and any combination of which but oklahoma christian specifically as soon as they get that ball rolling and as soon as a player like g-man starts feeling more confident they feel like they hit an entirely new level
they like to tackle the series head on. That that's one of their their greatest strengths. Uh, and it's why it's why I don't like when they get complacent because they end up just playing the game rather than playing the game. And you know, difference in tone, big difference in how they appear on the field. Uh, you know, G-Man. I love the fact that he can back up the trash talk. I love the fact that he can just whimsically go about his business and still score absolute bangers. But I just think what happens if this team focuses 100% of the time? Sky's the limit. Not so much for UT Dallas. That is the big result. It was the threatening upset. Upset no longer. Boise State survived the game seven thriller to walk out four three victors. Will Oakland University be able to pull off a similar big Galgan? My, I mean, my biggest issue prior to this was that they play far too reactively. I have no... I guess you could say great job from G-Man to block off Tysonic Boom. Um, and actually, I will give G-Man that full credit. I thought it was a, an own goal between two players from Oakland. Never mind me, folks. 1006. I mean... You, you ask Oakland to react to that, it's like being asked to react to getting punched three times in the face by Mike Tyson. <laughs> like it's just, it, and so much of that sequence was just bing, bang, pop, and OC have a scoring chance. Demos go through, they're clinical down the middle of the field. There's oh. nothing you can really see on the other side. And now you start to see the slip ups, these questionable decisions. Oakland don't know exactly where they want to be. Pete though, always able to find the crossbar and stay relevant, but a wall in front of the okay. net by Sonic Boom finally gets it to go. I know exactly what you're talking about. We're both looking at Whale being like, why are you so far behind the play, dude? You have a great chance to have a free shot at target. Again, mercifully for Oakland, Pete does so much to keep this particular charge alive. And Tysonic Boom, albeit just about, gets it over the line. But seriously, you're not going to win this series, Oakland, if you continue to sit back. Where was the bombastic play? Where, oh sorry, where has the bombastic play? Where has the confidence gone from game number one? Because even when you're losing, you're not too far away. I don't know, at the same time, OC needs to score in a sequence like that. They had a double commit from Oakland so high up towards the ceiling, but they still get shot after shot. So maybe it's not all doom and gloom right now. Still tied at one. North goes off the nice. back wall and a good block by Tysonic Boom to deny Chili from the follow through. North likely going to turn around and send this ball right back where it came from, but Heat says return to sender as well. Chili forced to play this one down. Calm things down just a little bit with low boost. Fake it till you make it. Well, no more faking it when you got a respawn in three seconds. Tysonic Boom, uh, barring the relatively small goal, return is absolutely an MVP for this team. At the center of everything good that they do, but they don't, I mean, they don't have him there. That's the important thing to get across. Chili, great accuracy. It's G-Man the provider. But he expects a near post shot. He's got to be expecting that going far post. It's a much more difficult shot to try and slot it in at the near post, especially when you're that far out from the goal itself. OC reestablished that lead. I think my prior analogy of walking speed and how Ooh! many steps ahead either team is. I think it's safe to say we flipped that script entirely. OC getting the better of so many opportunities. And again, when G-Man starts cooking, you need to get out of the way. It is dangerous. Vibes are immaculate. Truly, truly brilliant from OC Esports. And Oakland, after some, some truly brilliant performances themselves, Looking to sink without a trace. Just a one game win with North in this OC side. They simply cannot find enough goals to supplement what are decent starts to the games. And even then, this one hasn't been so decent. Half the game gone, Galgen. Two goals to find just for OT. It's North who wants oh, to make, make that it three. three. And there it is. OC trying to convince us all that this series is over at six. And far be it from us to tell them any different because what is that shot? You've got every bit of momentum carrying you away into the corner. Quick turn, buries it in the middle like it's absolutely nothing. 
It is turning into a route from Oklahoma Christian. And it could get a lot worse. Oakland struggling every which way. They have to string together some passes. And even then, they have to get it on target. They have to work the defense. All these steps just to score one, let alone many. And OC Esports, big props to them. Anytime that they know possession is going to be lost, they look to put it in as difficult a situation for their opponents to make the most out of as possible. It's highly commendable how this team has bounced back. Same side, you can tell it's not ideal for Oakland right now. They're not finding the touches they want. They're not in the areas they need to be. That one goes well clear of Tysonic Boom, and you've immediately got to cycle out of the zone where OC bring it right back north with a big carry. No bump on the back end. And a nice little box <laughs> out here from Chili and Peep. Tysonic Boom will clean things up. And they're one step closer. Well, I... Is that a rule one? I struggled to call that a rule one, but that was a great bump from Whale. G-Man completely bullied. There is still time, Galgan. 75 seconds for two. I feel like there was the number assigned to that, but I, I can't be sure. I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced, but at any rate, it's it's great to see that level of respect or just, you know, kind of trolling, oh, sending it in. Like, OC are playing like they have already won this series, and they're one minute, nine seconds away from confirming said result, but the confidence cannot be shaken right now. Really poor kickoff from an Oakland perspective. He is the third man, and he comprehensively loses that challenge. G-Man, still a lot of work to do. So fair play, gets it on target. Very nicely done. And now with 60 seconds left to find three, you are starting to feel a little more comfortable in your brand new shoes. Gonna go walking about on the town, showing off the swag, the, the, uh, the, oh, there's a, there's a word for it, isn't it? The, 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 I, I don't know where I'm going with that. What I do know is that OC Esports looking very difficult to beat now. It's certainly something that is an easy conclusion. I think at this point, when you think of the context of the six games that we've seen, first and second both went to Oakland, but the first ended in overtime. The second, a zero second sequence where OC have a small glimpse of winning it close to zero seconds themselves. They let it go to the other side and Oakland looked confident enough to win it. The rest, Feels like history as OC blows things out in four straight games, getting more and more confident as they go. 5 2 as the scoreline stands with 10 seconds to play. It's all but confirmed. Oakland can look for a consolation, but it's the lower bracket for them waiting very closely. OC, they secure themselves at worst a top three finish. They will get some of that prize pool, and what a deserving team to get to that spot. They may have walked in to one weekend, won it all, and said, all right, peace, we'll see you at playoffs, but it's clear that they deserve that upper final berth, and they've got it here. And I'm so pleased with that final game in particular. None of the hallmarks of what we saw against Terps, where they were threatening to throw it away unnecessarily, even though they had it well within them to win the game. Uh, we were seeing great industry from the two players who I'm thinking, these are the two players who were there to flex. These are the two players who were there to demonstrate flair. Uh, G-Man with some brilliant tracking runs, some brilliant disruption plays. Uh, Chili was fantastic in defense, uh, shouldering a lot more of the responsibility off North, who was allowed to press forward uh, a little bit more, showing some of his flair with uh, his nice little uh, pop up into the flick goal. I'm, yeah, I, <laughs> I've kind of run out of words because they played so well, Galgan, that there's very difficult to, it's very difficult to pick up on what they didn't do well at, um, or indeed a specific area where they excelled at because everything was eight, nine, 10 out of 10. And just to confirm as well, because I, I wanted to check this in the downtime as we look at the replays, both of these teams are done for the day because of how this bracket works out. Yes. 
that is Oakland University dropping to lowers, but they have secured top six. That's not in the prize pool. They'll have one series that they need to win in order to get fourth and at least a look at that prize pool. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm right there with you. This feels like such a turnaround in the series, and yet at the same time, it, it kind of just felt like we were waiting for Oklahoma Christian to wake up. Not that they weren't awake, in the first few games, they obviously knew that they were going to have to make a roster change mid-series. They made it earlier than they wanted to because the initial plan was play two games with Chicken and then bring North in. Obviously, the first goes to OT. You don't have time to get Chicken in for the second and make that adjustment on the fly. But North specifically fit in so well to this roster that it felt seamless. It felt like this could have been the main three. And I think that's exactly what we look for out of these teams. Man, that goal from G Man is unreal. And yet, I, I think again, it's it's so easy for us to to sit here, and I have done that literally in the last 20 minutes, where I said, "Oh, you know, is North actually the better player for for this particular series?" And I am going to stand by that. I, I think that both Chicken and and North are very different styles of of player. I, I think that North again puts in that consistent seven, eight out of ten which is kind of essential is an essential linchpin for a lot of rocket league rosters you know you can't afford to have your zens filling out the entirety of a roster that just doesn't work you need your alpha 54s you need your uh need your uh torments you know you you need your shorzets you need you need these players who are just going to sit there and provide really good sensible performances game in game out not to say that chicken isn't capable of that but i'm looking at north and i'm seeing much more consistency which i saw from chicken in that oc terp series of which a reminder oc won that 4-0 so i think that's a huge compliment to north and his ability and indeed his uh his mission to fit into this roster seamlessly again you can only applaud what OC Esports have been able to pull off here. I am curious to see how they line up for the upper finals, though. Mm. Still no confirmation on whether it's Pescados or Maryville. We think it's probably going to be Maryville based on their previous form outside of Rallycry Collegiate Series, in which case, I don't know. On the basis of today, maybe worth keeping North handy. We've got a lot to think about, and I think that's a great point to end on for Oklahoma Christian. They've got plenty of cards in their deck to play with tomorrow for their series. They're obviously used to playing on stream. They've done it twice here today, and they'll do it at least twice more over the course of the final two shows here for the Rally Cry Collegiate Series featuring Rocket League presented by the Army National Guard. We are closing in on the wrap up of day one. Again, the day is done for teams like Oklahoma Christian and Oakland. Of course, Pescados and Maryville University will finish their day up soon as well we are trimming the field down once again from eight teams going into this next round to six that means that we have some lower bracket matches to finish up those will be terps esports going up against boise state meanwhile the winner of southern miss coca-cola and ohio state gray will have to play against those pesky drexel dragons to see which of those four teams two of them advance to not so championship sunday you'll have to wait until march 16th to find out who takes home the lion's share but we still have one more match to show you everybody to lower round three we go for an elimination match either terps and boise state or southern miss coca-cola ohio state gray versus drexel dragons we'll see you on the other side of this short break our generation isn't turning away from the world's problems watch us fly ahead rise to every challenge and overcome anything watch us become the next greatest generation